delivering on the digital vision. Are we there yet? This seems to be a common cry from oil and gas companies, senior executives from around the world. My name is Mike Jones. I'm the general manager for Do It Lean's North American Business Unit. To get started and set the stage for this talk, let me share an excerpt from a recent McKinsey article. This comment should resonate with everyone listening today. In my experience, the reality is that every oil and gas operation is working hard to embrace new digital ways to improve their business, whether it's a full-blown digital transformation or opportunistic implementations to streamline their operations, drive field efficiency, or to deliver on health and safety initiatives. But what I hear all too often from senior executives is, we've implemented a lot of new technologies, Mike, but I'm not sure if we're getting the best bang for our investment. I like to call this the hammerhead stall. You did all the hard work implementing a new technology, but just before reaching full value, things start to peter out. While this has been a challenge for technology implementations over the years, there are modern ways to run your projects that will help avoid the hammerhead stall. So let me share three simple techniques that will drive better technology adoption. These are techniques that are being practiced by most of my oil and gas customers today and can benefit any organization. They are one, embrace the notion of MVPs or minimum viable products. You know, I hear all the time the objection that we have to build everything before it can be used, which is simply a cop out for doing the work needed to start small. By adopting an MVP mindset, it will let you engage the business early, get feedback, tune the vision, and drive end user adoption. The rule, no project should be longer than two months. All right, second, be agile. Now, many of you may be ready to check out as you're thinking we already use agile development approaches here. However, the reality is that while this may be true, I see all too often that the IT team is trying to shield the business from the development of the technology. And being agile and overcoming the hammerhead stall mandates your development teams engage end users. I hear all the time from IT professionals things like, oh no, we understand the business better than the business, or the business doesn't have time to meet with us regularly. What I really find is that IT does not want the business to give feedback and request changes as the new application is being built because it's just simply too disruptive to the development process. And I see this being especially true when new solutions are built using traditional coding approaches like C Sharp or Java or any of the native mobile development languages being used for your field services apps. To be truly agile, you have to engage the end users in all phases of the technology development effort. And last but not least, be fast. Your IT teams need to adopt technology that will let them deliver working solutions in weeks versus months or years. The goal, deliver working software every two weeks. By doing this, you'll be able to deliver more in less time making your MVP releases that much more interesting and allows your IT team to listen to user feedback, make changes on the fly, and be truly agile. Let me share some examples from two leading companies in the oil and gas space. First, I'm sure you recognize these two logos. And while both are in the oil and gas space, they actually play very different roles in the market. They also have some things in common. First, they're applying an MVP approach to many of their digital transformation efforts. Second, they're applying agile processes where the business is playing a highly engaged role in the software delivery and rollout. And last but not least, they deliver incredibly fast by taking advantage of OutSystems modern application platform. Let me start with Chevron. A great example is their site access screening tool. Let me share a recent clip where Chevron's product line director shared an overview of the site access screening tool. All right, so I guess uh, the site access screening tool that we developed here was something that was, uh, I had actually a, a, our health and safety manager come up to us back in, in sometime in April, and he wanted a solution to help ensure 
uh, safe and reliable operations out uh, in the field during the uh, COVID pandemic. And he was basically asking us for three things. Uh, one, he wanted people to be able to complete a self-assessment before they came to any of our sites and uh, to make sure that they didn't have any COVID symptoms or exposure. Uh, the second thing was when those folks were came on site, he wanted an on-site screener to be able to go through and review uh, that person's record, make sure they actually completed a self-assessment and uh, came back positive. And then we add additional layer of screening on top of that. So they do a thermal scan and all of our sites out in the field. And then the, uh, he wanted a record of that. And the third thing was he wanted to be able to track uh, people who are restricted from site and be able to uh, notify folks that need to be notified, clinicians and, and superintendents, that kind of thing. And let that person know when they could actually come back on site. So up here in Canada, I'm not sure what it is in the States right now. It's about a 14 day restriction. So he wanted this ASAP. Uh, so we put together kind of a cross-functional team up here. We had a representation from myself. I'm the uh, I was product line manager up here for our business enabling team. We had a uh, legal, uh, legal analyst join, our, uh, analyst join our team. We had an IRM coordinator join our team. Then we had a couple different HES people. And we what we ended up doing is building this tool in about 30 days. Uh, so that was from the day that we had kind of our first meeting to the day that we delivered product. We went through and, and built this thing very quickly. We started with an idea and we had a product that we were ready to deploy in 30 days. And uh, oh, yep. I'm going to interrupt you because I remember um, I shared actually a, a, an email with um, that the, the COVID app that we were um, offering to people. And um, I have to laugh, guys, you'll appreciate this. Um, I, I, Lawrence called and said, hey, we think this might work. And I said, okay, great. You know, we should be able to get this, you know, up and running in three, four days, right? And Lawrence said, yeah, but we may have a couple of changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we was 100% uh, going through and taking that uh, product that you do at Lean had already built, which helped kind of uh, front load a lot of our thinking around the process. And it gave us something to actually look at. So it actually acted just kind of a wireframe for us. Mm -hmm. And we took that, and by the time we were done with it, we ended up with something uh, a lot different, but probably wouldn't have happened that fast at all if we didn't have some, somewhere to start with. So that was pretty much uh, almost an interactive wireframe that we could kind of look at and see what's working and what's not working, and then um, uh, make changes to it. So um, that being said, from a technical perspective, we needed something that could work on any device. So uh, we needed something that could work on somebody's desktop computer, uh, could work on somebody's mobile phone, someone's iPad, any of that kind of stuff, because we don't have a lot of control over what our contractors and devices are out in the field, especially our, our partner companies, right? We can control what employees have, but, but not what our partner companies have out in the field. We wanted to be able to go through and provide something that would allow uh, users with single sign-on to access the application or users that didn't have single sign-on, they could just use your username and password. We were going to have to uh, allow about a thousand users a day to use the application to log their uh, symptoms or exposure. And we, kind of the last piece here, which was really kind of critical, was we needed to satisfy internal and external um, data privacy laws. So we, we had to have encryption on the back end. We had to make sure that all the legal language inside the application made sense for our region. And uh, I think at the end, Mike, we, it was about two to three weeks of development time total to take that application to refactor it. That extra week, I think, was more more around the change management side and just kind of design phase. Exactly. But you know, when we when we deployed it, uh, it was immediately adopted, and uh, I think we had some small issues with us during the stabilization period, but nothing that we couldn't fix within 24 hours, and nothing that caused like kind of a disruption in use. So overall, it was a, a really good win for us. So it got us a lot of good attention here in CBU, and eventually, uh, some of our counterparts and other business units got wind of it, and we started sharing it. And now we're deploying it to the rest of the enterprise uh, for Chevron. We're making it available for the rest of the enterprise. So as of this morning, I think we have, we're expecting about 15,000 users to be using the application, um, six of our business units at least. Um, and we're spending basically an additional 30 days taking this solution that was built for just one single business unit and building configurability into it uh, that will allow it to be uh, adopted by pretty much any business units that we have uh, globally. So in summary, we took a prototype application that Do It Lean had available and used it as an interactive wireframe for the business to explore and rapidly define a set of MVP requirements. Then, leveraging the power of Out Systems, we took the prototype app, rewrote it, and delivered a working solution in 30 days. In Chevron's case, the 30 days was from 
first meeting to in the hands of end users. So from there, success trickled to the broader Chevron community, which needed to take the core application and make it a bit more configurable so it could be used across multiple business units, supporting different countries, privacy laws, etc. This was done in an additional 30-day effort. The app is now used by tens of thousands of end users across six plus business units and is a testament to the power of OutSystems platform and avoiding the hammerhead stall. Now, let me share a recent video from Shaw Kors, head of Eyeline Digital Solutions, where he explains the WellDivisor application and the impact it's having on their business. Our customers install and maintain much of the energy infrastructure our world depends on. We wanted to put our domain expertise into digital solutions. In 2018, we started building a portfolio of products and capabilities under our iLine brand that provided this expertise with complete, intuitive, and actionable information. Our new solution, iLine Weld Advisor, allows our field technicians, auditors, customers to obtain, transfer, approve, and visualize weld inspection images and corresponding data remotely and in real time. Project-specific online portal provides a game-changing transparency and rich visualization of key information for our clients anytime, anywhere. This is a great achievement made possible by a strong cross-functional team from Shaw Corps Integrity Management Group, Digital Solutions, and Do It Lee. This seemingly simple piece of software had many complex integrations with various well scanning technologies, cloud storage mechanisms, and integrations with existing systems. The first MVP release was done in eight weeks with three delivery sprints of two weeks each and a small team of two and a half developers, plus of course, key business representatives. It was followed with a second small release, really made up of eight days of development spanning about a two week time frame, which was really to fine tune a few of the features and is now driving improved operational efficiency and probably more importantly, reducing operational risk through these remote audits. So in summary, accelerating digital and avoiding the hammerhead stall, you need to do three simple things. One, take an MVP approach, where you start small and get to your first release in 60 days or less. Two, be agile and engage in users throughout the development process. React to their feedback and deliver exactly what they need to get started. And three, build fast by taking advantage of a modern application platform like OutSystems. So if you'd like to learn more about OutSystems and how Do It Lean can help you accelerate your digital transformation, feel free to reach out anytime by visiting www.doitlean.com or send an email to learn more at doitlean.com or feel free to reach me directly at mike.jones at doitlean.com. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.